welcome to another up close video. So today's one is looking at Tonic Showcase number six, which is the Floral Boutique die set. Um, and I actually have the one with the real packaging this time. So you can see uh, the packaging actually gives you some lovely examples of how you might want to use the die set as well, which is brilliant. And it's actually double sided so you've also got some extra sort of views on this side and it also gives you a little overview of the dies that are in this die set as well which is brilliant because if you uh, misplace a die or if you've been crafting with them and you're not sure where a die set is supposed to go if you've been using multiple sets um, you've got an, an actual kind of guide of which dies are in this die set which is brilliant and there are some really beautiful designs and actually looking at that with them all cut out that large flower it could kind of be a sort of Tudor rose kind of design you could add the little um, like thorny bits coming out and and make it into a stylized kind of Tudor rose it's not quite the right number of petals and stuff but it, it could give that kind of a look if you wanted a Tudor rose kind of a look for your card um, I just thought I'd mention that because I saw it as I was looking at those pictures so, or you also, from looking at that, you might also think this looks very similar to a previous showcase die set. And it is. It is a similar concept. So having the, like, it's basically kind of like four smaller die sets within this one die set with the different types of dies that Tonic do. So it's a great, like, tester kind of um, set to get for testing out like different kinds of dies that Tonic actually bring out and it is very similar in concept with the the kind of smaller sets within the big set to the um, Tonic Showcase number three which was called Decadent Swirls um, if it's still available I'll link it below as well I don't I can't remember if it's sold out or not uh, but if it is still available I'll link it below because if you like this kind of concept um, having the two different sets they'll work really nicely together and give you a few more options and I mean you have this header die I don't know whether they're the same size no that one is slightly longer I was going to say you could sort of mix and match them but that one is slightly longer but it just gives you um, some extra combinations if you have the both of them but if you didn't get showcase number three um showcase number six is the similar concept so you could grab this one um instead of the number three as well but i just thought i would show you as i have them both how um they're a similar kind of concept and they would go really nicely together if you have already bought the previous one so that was number three but this is number six so as i was saying Oh, actually, now I'll mention first, all of the showcase die sets come with their own storage. So uh, when it's a large A4 set like this, you're actually getting it in one of the large A4 storage pockets, which fit the large uh, ring binders that they do, the orange ones with the zip all the way around the edge. Um, I'll link that below as well in case you want a storage folder for them. But they do just have the standard positioning of holes on them. So... So if you actually have a four ringed normal ring binder they will fit in that as well or if you only have a two ringed ring binder um, they would also fit in that too. So you know if you don't want to invest in an actual folder you can just store these in a regular ring binder which is brilliant or um, what I tend to do is I just store them on my shelf so I've actually because I didn't get the packaging in this one I've just labelled it at the top for what it is so I remember what it is and then I just store them upright you know like in a bookcase. So you know there's different ways of storing it but you might also get showcase ones where you get the two smaller die sets as well but this one is a large one and the storage pockets come with their own magnetic sheet as well so they the dies actually are on acetate but you're also getting the magnetic sheet in there too and the magnetic sheets from tonic are double sided so if you did get one of the other large showcase die sets or any other dies that you might have brought recently um, you can actually use the other side of the magnetic sheet and keep them all in there together and then with this kind of system of labelling you could actually just put labels on the other side for whatever die sets you've put in your folder as well so not only are you getting the storage for this die set you've also got a whole nother side of your A4 sheet for your another set or a few sets as well I mean actually if you if you collected um, all of the bits and pieces the, all of the online ones that Tonic bring out in a month I'm sure you'd have enough room on here to fit um, the kit because that would be an A5 kind of size plus designer's choice as well so you know you could 
store them all that way as well depending I mean it, it, it depends on how you store your dies really so there's just like options really I just thought I'd mention that so this month's showcase as I said earlier it's kind of four die sets within one I'm probably going to repeat myself a lot from what I said in my um up close video for number three of the showcase so I will make sure to link that at the end at the end two little videos pop up and I'll make sure one of those is my number three showcase um because because it's a similar concept the cards that I showed you in that video will um well hopefully spark some more ideas of how you could use this die set I think I tried to use them all differently I don't think I've used anything exactly the same way that I did um, in that video so you know it'll give you multiple options of how to kind of use these header sort of dies and the corner dies and all that kind of stuff so basically this month's die set it is four different die sets within one so this die set here this collection of dies is like an edger border kind of a die set this one is I think they call them header dies there was a few that came out um, a while ago. I don't think there's been any that recently. The ones I'm thinking of had a fairy kind of theme to them. I know I have them somewhere, but um, I haven't completely organised my dies and I can't 100% remember where they are and it'll probably take me a while to find them. Um, but I'm sure there was a set of like... I think there was like toadstools and stuff in them as well. Anyway, that's kind of like um, the header sort of a die. Then you've also got this gorgeous intricate frame which is perfect for a 5x7 card or if you want some more matte and layers then an A5 card would work brilliantly for this one as well. Or you could do a similar thing to what past me will show you later um, that I did on one of my cards. Um, I actually squashed it into a smaller square but you could do a similar kind of thing and um, elongate this into more of um, an 8x8 kind of square as well. You could actually trim it into four corners and move them further apart and give you an 8x8 kind of a card as well. So that's kind of like a gorgeous decorative frame and you get the sentiment inside it. And then the fourth kind of die set is actually a pocket die so or a corner die. I can't remember what they were called now. They had uh, four different sets of them. I'm pretty sure I did a video on it so I think I've edited that one. It should be up on my channel um, and they did four different sets of pockets so you can actually use it's got score lines on the side that you can fold over and create a pocket for your memory books to put a gift card in inside a card just to have like a tag or a photograph on the front of your card as well or you can trim those little tabs off and it's just a corner then it's just a beautiful decorative corner and it's a verso die so you can cut it into the card or use the outside edge to cut it out of the card as well so now I've gone through the, the little sort of types of die sets that are in there so now I'll give you an up close look of all of the the dies as well and you might notice that this one is much longer and it's actually well not quite the width of A4 so it will go still go through your machine although you'd probably want to run it through um, diagonally or this way so that you've got an even pressure across it it'd be quite difficult to get through your machine if you do it that way but um, they've given you a really long one so if you like making your 8x8 cards you don't even have to extend this I think it is actually 8 inches yeah it's 8 inches long so for those of us who like making smaller cards you know it's just like a bonus having an extra long die but for those of you who love making your larger cards you then don't have to extend the design which is brilliant and this is a really gorgeous scalloped one it's a really tiny scallop but it's also got the little cut out details in it as well so it kind of gives a lacy sort of a look and um, if you don't have any scalloped or lacy nesting dies, you could just cut this four times into thin uh, scraps of card, like thin widths of them, add a piece of double sided along the bottom um, edge that won't cut, it will just be whatever length the card is, and then you can cut them to length and stick them behind like a square mat that you have. Um, and it will give that look that you've layered it up onto a scalloped square as well. So it's kind of like a little cheat die. And um, also it's perfect for just adding a border to a strip of card that you're going to mount your sentiment on or just to use to create some fun different modern kind of designs. I did a kind of starburst effect with it so I've actually sort of used it like this going around a card uh, that I'll show you later on as well. So I really like that they've given you a really long 
die because you don't often get them that long they're usually as long as these kind of decorative ones so that actually let's show you how long the decorative ones are too as a comparison so just looking at that compared to the eight inch one you can tell that's probably about six and a half inches long and yeah it is so that will fit really nicely um well, it'll fit really nicely on a mat on your 5x7 cards because it's just slightly smaller than uh, 7 inches tall. Or you could actually create like a nice frame that's slightly inset from the card for an 8x8 card. Or for those of us who like making the smaller cards, um, usually they're about 5.5 inches tall, maybe even 6 inches tall. So having a 6.5 inch die is brilliant for that. So you've got that beautiful one and then you've got a slightly simpler kind of design as well so this has got three of those larger flowers that could be a kind of Tudor rose kind of design and they're all sort of linked together with different viney bits and um, actual leaves in here as well and there's also tiny little flowers all over it too they're beautiful solid little flowers that are perfect for a nouveau drop in the center and then the smaller border is very similar it's basically all of the bits that are in between the flowers so without the large flowers and you've just got um, those little solid tiny little flowers in there as well which again perfect for a nouveau drop in them um, so I think these two work really nicely together this one you can cut um, so both of these actually have their outside edge on them so if you cut this into the card the where the straight edge is that will stay the remainder of the amount of card that you've left before you cut it and then it will actually completely cut out the intricate detail around the edge of both of those but you also get the extra like bubble edge kind of a die for the largest design as well so on a card that I'll show you later I actually use both of these together putting the flat edges together so it completely cut it out on both sides, but then I could use this extra bubble to create um, a layer to go behind the whole piece that I'd cut out. And I did it out of double-sided adhesive and put glitter on it as well. But again, um, you don't have to just use this one and this one together to do that kind of thing. You can actually use the large one twice back to back and do a nice decorative uh, strip down the center of your card. Or you can do two of the smaller ones back to back and again have a skinnier kind of decorative strip. Or you can uh, layer the two kind of designs together as well. Then this one is what I think is called more of like a header die. Um, and you can use these in lots of different ways. Um, this card that I'll show you later, I did a shaker card because I'm sure in the showcase number three video, I said, I think I'd done a shaker just with the one half of it. And I said you could actually flip this and have two of them um, to make it more like a larger shaker. And so I did that um, in the samples for this video. And the way this kind of header works is that you get this piece, which has all of your cutting edges on it so this actually is the outside cutting edge of the intricate detail but it also gives you a rectangle around it and the idea is that you would cut this into your card blank and then you would score the rest of the card blank um, where those two cut lines are and then you could fold this bit behind and the intricate detail would stay sticking up on the card so you've got that kind of an option you can do the cutting into the card and just having a pretty decorative paper behind this aperture or you can do the shaker card behind the aperture or you can use a couple of these and do um, a bigger aperture shaker card kind of thing and leaving a channel in the middle for your sentiment but you also obviously have the intricate detail as well which if you want to cut this out, you have to use both of these dies together because the, the larger rectangle one has the outside cutting edge on. But again, if you're cutting these two together, you can then add this um, on top of the solid one that you've cut. Or you can just cut the detail straight in. So for a shaker, you would see the bits shaking behind it as well. And then you can also cut these two together and then flip it round line it up and cut them together again and you get like a nice decorative oval kind of piece which is on one of the cards that uh, past me will show you later so really lovely design again it's got one of those kind of almost Tudor rosy sort of flowers in the center which you could snip out and then like decoupage up as well um, to give more dimension but really gorgeous design and as well as using it um, like I have on the card I'll show you later, on the packaging you can also have cut the two together and cut four of them to create like an actual decorative kind of edge to a square mat as well. So lots of different ways of using this kind of a die. So they're nice and versatile that one. You come up with plenty of different 
ways so it doesn't even look like the same die really. And we've also got a corner die or pocket die and as I said before you have the little fold lines that are like the glue tabs that you could stick underneath the layer on the front of your card or you can just stick it straight onto the top of your card as well depending on how thick of a pocket that you want it to be and everything and then you can also cut the decorative detail straight into the pocket or you can cut it separately and stick it on top of a solid pocket depending what kind of card you're doing and you can also snip off the glue tabs and just use it as a corner or you can actually use either four of them or two of them to create a different square design as well so I'm pretty sure I showed this in um the previous showcase video with this similar kind of concept that you could cut it like this and then like this to give you a smaller square design or you can layer them like this and then twist it on that axis and you get like a diamond design which could then you know you could do it this way and it would become the larger square design as well and you could either cut them all in one piece um, and then like hand trim out the edge or have it cut into your project or you can use the outside like pocket kind of a die and then just trim off the glue tabs and stick them all together so different ways of doing that kind of thing and then the final die or the final like mini die set within here is another one of these gorgeous 5x7 decorative frame kind of designs which you can alter so it doesn't have to just be a rectangle you can snip these two long pieces out overlap the detail and squish it together and make it a gorgeous really full kind of decorative square as well which I've done on one of the cards and this central piece which is the actual decorative die is completely a, like an actual cut out die so this one will cut everything out giving you all of the edges not just a verso die, it cuts all of the edges out for you. So you can get that beautiful detail just with one pass through your die cutting machine, which is brilliant. But as you can see left on the magnetic sheet, you also have both of the edges as well. So if you wanted to make a shaped card, you can use the larger outside edge to create an actual shaped card that you would then stick this onto. Or you could use um, any like combination of just one or two of these dies to help make an aperture in your card for doing a shaker card or you could use both of them together to create a solid mat to go behind this you might want to do paper piecing in it but also raise it up on your card so having the option of doing that solid piece to go behind um, is you know really versatile for those kind of ideas as well and then finally the last die um, is a sentiment die which has the bubble as well and it says thanks a bunch and it's got um, the same designs that are on like this border and within all of the other designs from the set as well which is really nice but I'm sure you could snip out um, thanks if you just wanted a thanks die and you could use that individually as well you've, you've only got a few little pieces to snip away I don't think it would be too difficult to snip that out and it would still be legible as the word thanks as well. And you have the bubble so that you can uh, do what I do and cut it from vellum just to like blur the background a little bit or you can cut it from a solid colour of card so that you can use foam tape behind it and completely raise up your sentiment. Or you could do um, just a really simple card cutting this aperture into your main background. So like... This is a small kind of card that I would like to make. You could cut, you could do an inky background, then you could cut this straight into there, um, and then you could cut, whoops, then you could cut a white one of this, place it over the top, and make this aperture a shaker, and you'd have the shaker behind the sentiment, or you could do the inky background, cut both of these out of there, disregard all of the fall away pieces and use some double sided adhesive behind this aperture, stick the sentiment back on and then use glitter to fill in the rest. I like doing that kind of technique as well because the inky background is then continuous from the sentiment to the um, backing piece as well so it just gives it a different sort of a look. So, And that's just a size comparison to show you uh, the sentiment size there as well. And I could do a size comparison for the corner so if you were going to use this as a corner on a smaller card, you could actually put two and you'd have like a diagonal channel left that you could put your sentiment down. Or if you were going to do the square kind of idea, it would fill up the sort of top two thirds of the card and you flip the other one over and put it here. Then also as a size comparison, because I used this die 
on a square card but as a size comparison for a small card it wouldn't fit portrait but it would definitely fit nicely landscape and actually yeah I reckon you could do the double sided shaker on a landscape card and you would just have a little slither going through the middle holding it all together so that would make a really lovely design as well. So basically the card I'll show you later on, you could just squash the dimensions down so that the panel in the centre is more narrow. And then also size-wise, this kind of die, you can see how nicely it will go on a smaller card because you can just snip off the top and bottom and the same with the other one as well. And you can see the sort of width of the other one is just less than half of the width of like an A2 kind of a size of card. And then also the large decorative frame. I think in my showcase number three video, I used it like this on a smaller card. Um, so you can actually just use half of the design because the, the big design, it would be too big, but actually that would look really nice if you did that. Um, and it would just create like a nice little focal kind of piece maybe maybe even doing it that way and you'd snip off all of the excess so you just have the pattern coming into the card and then you could have the sentiment in the center as well I think that would look really lovely so you can easily use this larger die on smaller cards as well so I'll pass you back to or I'll pass you on to uh, past me to show you the samples that I created with this gorgeous die set Okay, so I've got six different cards to show you. This one is really simple, just actually just using one of the dies from the showcase. That really gorgeous, dainty, scalloped border. I just couldn't resist making some kind of like fanned out design on a card with it. It's almost like a sunburst design, but I've done it in greeny blue kind of colours and you've got that gorgeous scalloped effect. And I've also done um, faux stitching along the edges as well because the the way the die is you know it's got like um a little bit of metal that sticks out towards the back part of the card that doesn't cut so it kind of gives you that indent along there which is perfect for um doing any faux stitching along it you'd either go below the line like i have or you could go above the line um to keep your stitching a little bit straighter than if you just were freehanding it i suppose uh, which i thought was you know it's a it's a nice way of making sure that you kind of get it uniform along all of the the different borders on there as well and i've also combined um some other sentiment dies from Tonic with the dies um, that I've used on these cards that I'm showing you as well. So this one is one of their sentiment header dies, which I'll make sure is uh, linked below because I'm I'm pretty certain you can still get these ones. There might be some of the sentiment strips that you can't get anymore because they have been out a few years now. Um, but I just wanted to show you a really simple card, how you can just take that one border um, and add any sentiment that you already have into it and create a really simple, kind of more masculine looking card as well. And when you're like arranging your fanned out effect of pieces, um, just imagine that there is like a vanishing point where they all meet. Um, and I've done it so it's not on the card just because I thought it would be less cluttered having them all a little bit further away from each other. So if you visualise that, this would probably come out to here from this line coming down and this line coming up the vanishing point would probably be like here and that way you get all your angles um, kind of not looking a little bit odd above and below the straight line you've used in the middle so um, that's just a tip for any anyone doing a, a kind of card like this I haven't got it exactly spot on but it just gives you a little bit of a, a guide of where you're aiming to sort of get the angles coming from so that is a really quick and simple card then I wanted to play around with some glitters and because you had the you only have the cutting edge for this larger decorative border I thought it'd be nice to show you how you can use the larger one and I decided to use the smaller one in my original idea I was gonna cut the larger one the opposite side as well but I decided to go with the smaller little border with the sort of wiggly um, foliage going up and down with the tiny little flowers um, and so I've cut them both onto the same piece of white card and then I have used just the outside edge to cut a piece of the Craft Perfect double sided adhesive sheets. And then I've uh, laid that piece down onto my card blank um, and taken off obviously one side of the backing to stick it onto the card blank and take off the other side of the backing. Then stick your intricate die cut over the top, making sure to line it up um, with the like contours of the edge die. And then I've just taken four different colours of the Nouveau glitters. So the darkest one 
is the Lagoon Luster, which is from the Tropical Paradise set of Confetti and Glitters. Then I went with the Enchanted Eden, which was actually an exclusive colour for one of the craft kits. I think it might have been the Rustic Rose craft kit. I can't 100% remember, but I'm, I'm, I'm certain that this was an exclusive colour of glitter. Then I went down to the Aqua glitter, um, which came out in, I think it was called Peacock, the set of glitters, and this one was in it too, the turquoise. But you might already have these in the larger bottles because they came out in the large round kind of bottles um, in the beginning. So I used those two colours to finish it off. And then I decided to use one of the mix and match sentiments, uh, just for sympathy, because I thought it was quite a nice simple again kind of a little bit more masculine using the blue tones rather than going with pinky purples but again obviously anybody could like um bluey green kind of tones so it's kind of like a neutral sort of card and for the behind the sentiment i wanted the glitter to kind of match so i went with the lagoon luster to give the biggest contrast between the white die cut that i'd used on there so that is using those gorgeous detailed edge kind of dies with sticky double-sided sticky sheets and then lots of glitter and in the centers of those i did actually use some nouveau crystal drops as well i was just using white blizzard yeah white blizzard just the generic kind of clear one uh, with the glitter in so that is a sympathy card then i have done a photographic step-by-step -step for the tonic blog um for this card showing you how you can use the header kind of die to create a shaker card in the showcase number three which had a similar kind of concept of a die set I did a shaker card but I'm pretty sure I just did it one-sided and then I said in the video you could also flip it around and do it the other side but I didn't actually show it as a card so I thought I would actually make a sample like that this time so that you've got that kind of inspiration of how you can do it and even if you don't get this die set actually um if you look at that imagine this was just a square like a, a general nesting square die that you might have and then this piece it does actually kind of make a circle the way you've left the um skinny bit in the middle so if you've got any of the circular doily dies that tonic brought out a while ago or any kind of decorative circle um intricately die cut dies um, that would fit inside a square aperture that you've got. You could actually kind of recreate this without even having that kind of header die sort of thing. So seeing a card already made, um, even though it was using a different kind of die, having that central section hidden kind of makes you think about what other dies that you might have in your stash that could work for a similar kind of idea. Um, I just looked at that and saw that, so I thought I would mention that. And then the middle section, so because this die is only like this wide, I have cut them, I lined it up so that the border around the square a piece that I had cut was equal so when I cut the first one I lined it up with the top three edges there and when I cut the second one I lined it up with the bottom three edges so then I just I was just left with whatever the gap was in the middle I think it's about three and a half centimeters that little gap um so I then cut a piece of white card into I think that was two and a half centimeters wide strip I cut two of them one of them I used as the the main sort of backing piece and then the second one I cut that skinny decorative border into it just to give it a little bit of extra detail rather than just having a plain white panel I thought I'd do white on white with the border die cut just to give a little bit of um, extra interest and texture to it and then I just cut that gorgeous scalloped border twice from some little scraps of turquoise card and then stuck them above and below and then to create the shaker because you've already got those aperture areas there you just add your acetate behind it this is all in the step by step but you just add your acetate behind it surround the perimeter with foam tape and you can even put the foam tape across the center which means that some of the confetti will stay in the top chamber because if you split it into two chambers um, some will stay here but if you hadn't put foam tape behind here all of it would fall down to the bottom and there would be nothing up here but also um, another like positive or different way of doing a card from adding that foam tape behind that central piece you could use two different colors on here as well so you could do um like i don't know yellowy reddy kind of sunset sort of colors at the top and then like more groundy colors at the bottom for a different kind of idea um but yeah you can actually mix up and do two different colors if you split the shaker well in half and then 
to back the shaker after you've put all your bits and pieces in there you just add another piece of card and I just I did just use a plain green piece of card I often do an inky background to go behind it but I knew I wanted to put sort of sequins and two different kinds of confetti in this and I didn't want the detail of um, this die cut to be lost so I just used a plain coloured card but you can definitely do an ink blendy kind of a card background on there as well and the three confettis that I used or firstly I use sequins so these are the prickly pear sequins and they're actually all the same size these ones they're all that larger size then I also used the green meadow hexagons um, which also came in one of those four packs of confettis what the first selection of ones that were released so I think it was called peacock something um, for that selection and then I also used the luminous lily pad hexagons which came out in the rustic rose colour trend in the little four pack so I used all of those in the background and then for the little um, details because I used a dark green um, get well or cardstock for the get well and this is one of the sentiment strips I then added some um, vintage drops this is the Regency Green Nouveau Vintage Drop and I've just added some to the centres of those two flowers and then a few up and down here just to tie in that slightly darker tone of green in there as well so um, you know I thought that would go really nicely then you can kind of see that I kept to a bluey green colour scheme I started off with these two and I just really loved that um, like bright limey green with the darker green and the couple of teal kind of colours so I kept with that theme throughout the rest of the cards and these three are in my sped up video as you can see they've got very similar backgrounds so they all kind of go together but this first one was using the corner die and I didn't use it like the pocket so it's actually kind of like a pocket die but all you do is take your guillotine or some long bladed pair of scissors and just snip the edges off um, and then you're left with a gorgeous decorative corner die cut and I've used the water sprite I think it's called the kind of light green um, iridescent cardstock I'm pretty sure it's called water sprite um, I just thought it would give a really nice effect with the um, colours of ink that I used in the background I was using distress oxides and the gorgeous uh, big, big blending brushes or large blending brushes from Tonic. I really do love these. I've been using them so much. You can see how much sort of ink is in them. This one's even got like layers where I started off using a bright yellow ink and then I've gone on to like crack pistachio and stuff. Um, and then the colours of ink I was using, I was using oxides. So I used it, used Twisted Citron, um, crack pistachio and then Mermaid Lagoon as well for that deeper kind of blue colour. Um, this one I mostly used the two like greeny colours and I just brought in a little bit of the blue on the corners um, Just I thought it just needed a little bit of darkness on there and then I actually used the sentiment from the die set on this one and I did shadow it but I don't know if the glue slipped because the shadow's kind of gone exactly behind it it's not really showing that much but anyway it just gives it a little bit of three dimensional depth if that happens um, and I've used a vellum bubble behind it as well to make it stand out a little bit more and on the flowers on um, the iridescent card, I thought I would use the iridescent um, Nouveau drops. So I was using the Dragon Scales colour, which is one of the originals. It's one of my favourites. I think this might even be my third bottle now. I've used so much of this, um, but I really love these Dream Drops. Um, so that is the first of the three in the sped up video. Then I did this one, which this die is actually this die. So look how much of a different effect that you can get from using the same die. So this is just cutting them far apart and this is just cutting them close together. So you can see that it's a complete mirror down this central line and it is just, you just cut one of them and then you butt the dies right up against it, turn it over and you can see where the little cutting line is sort of overhanging into the detail and then you just cut it again and a whole like kind of overly sort of piece pops out with the gorgeous flowery design in it and I, I just, I'm just amazed sometimes at how much of a different effect you can get with a single die, well it's two dies because you have the intricate detail on the outside one but um, you know just cutting them further apart or closer together can really give a different look to it which is really nice um, 
it really doesn't look like it's from there. I suppose, I mean, the size is the same, obviously, but because when you move them apart, this looks like a way bigger design than this one. So it's kind of uh, tricking your eye, which is quite a cool effect. And then on this die cut, I've also used the um, dragon scales. I did splatter dragon scales watered down in the background of these cards as well, which you can kind of see. And this is um, a tonic stencil um, on there as well. I can't 100% remember the name but it's one of their relatively new ones. I don't know if it's the most recent set of stencils, it might be the one before that. Um, but yeah, one of their relatively new ones. And then I just use a Dymo labeler to do the thanks sentiment on this one as well. And then finally, the last one, um, which is also in the sped up video, I wanted to show how you can turn that rectangular frame into a square as well. So all you do is literally like snip into the detail, you can see where I've cut into it there. And you do that on both sides um, and snip out the little short section of uh, like straight piece that's in there. And then you can just overlap them to whatever height. So I could have moved them further apart and just made it a squatter kind of rectangle. But I wanted to make it um, an actual kind of square design. So I just moved them further together so they were overlapping. But I just sort of tucked this long piece over the top of this one and this long piece over the top of the bottom one. And then I've used um, a different tonic sentiment in there as well. So this is the Laurel Frames, I think they were called. I don't 100% know if they're still available because I think they were quite popular because of the little sentiments that were inside of them. But if I can find it to link to, I will link to it below the video. Um, and then I've just used the um, Dragon Scales Dream Drops to accent the little flowers on this and I did actually raise this up I know you think you're thinking oh my goodness how on earth would you put foam tape on the back of that it's so fine and dainty but you can get little thin strips behind these pieces around here and then you can get a little square behind the center of the flowers and that seems to hold it up quite nicely so that's what I did for that one so um, I hope you liked those samples that I've done. I hope it gives you a little bit of inspiration but if you haven't seen it go and watch um, the showcase up close video for the number three of the showcase die sets because it's a very similar um, die set as I'll probably have already told you um, so seeing those samples that I did then might give you a few more ideas of how to use this month's showcase as well. Um, so you know you can actually like mix and match the kind of ideas across the two different sets. So I will pass you back to future me to finish off the video for you. So I hope you enjoyed this up close video showing you Tonic Showcase number six, which is the Floral Boutique die set. And if you keep watching until the end of the video, the end screen will pop up and I will put on there the, um, the link to the showcase number three decadent swirls video i mean you might have already watched it and you might have got this die set but it will just give you um, a few extra ideas of how to use these kind of dies so like edger dies a larger frame a corner die and like a header die as well um, just to give you a few more options of cards that you might like to create with this die set as well so yeah i really hope you enjoyed this video i'm so glad i actually got sent the showcase dies uh, this month so i could do a proper video for you um although if i don't get sent any of the them and I can't get hold of them before like the launch date I will just do one of those ideas videos like I did for last month's showcase die set um, and I think a lot of you seem to enjoy it so hopefully those kind of videos are useful for you as well but thank you so much for watching um, all of the links for the designer's choice and if the if the number three is still there I'll put that down there too um, will be below the video or there'll be picture links over on my blog post as well um, and all of the links are affiliate links so if you do use any of my links um, I will get a small commission from the amount that you spend at no extra cost to you but I really really do appreciate you using my links um, I know it probably seems to you like it, it, it won't make that much of a difference but even if it's just like a couple of pounds it really does make a difference so um, thank you so much for using my links I really really do appreciate it um, and thank you so much for watching and staying right till the end of the video as well um, so have a lovely day and I will see you again in the next video. Bye!